Over a period of time, I've been seeing a group on the earth. And recently, I was out on the streets sharing the gospel with a group of friends. And one of those friends is an ex-missionary. And they said to me, I ought to go and read something. And when I went away to read it, I realised other people have seen them too. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name's Paul, I'm a former atheist, now an evangelist, a lover of people, a lover of Jesus, and I'm out on the streets sharing the gospel, praying for people and seeing God move mightily. And I also work with a group of people ministering to the homeless and to those that are in need. And if you would like to support the ministry, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. So over the last five years, I've been having a growing unction and more pictures of a group. So what is it that I've been seeing? I've been seeing a group of Christians walking the earth in mighty power, just like in the book of Acts, a group of Christians who were so powerful in the Holy Spirit. And as I did some research on the second century church, I continued to see that the book of Acts Christians continued on. But these Christians that I've seen were even more powerful than those. They were so fearless of man and had such a fear of God. I've seen pictures of them going into hospitals and praying for the sick and emptying hospitals and all the sick coming out healed. I've seen them so powerful and that they've raised the dead. And I want to start just talking about this today in the book of Acts at verse 5. And increasingly, believers in the Lord large numbers of men and women were being added to their numbers to such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by at least his shadow might fall on any of them. The people from the cities of the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together as well bringing people who were sick or tormented with unclean spirits and they were all being healed. Just think about it for a minute. You walk down the street, your shadow falls on someone and they get healed or you walk past somebody and they manifest the demon and get delivered and an unclean spirit comes out of them this is what the book of acts is talking about it's talking about christians that were so powerful that that happened and they were great testimonies for god the testimonies were so good that people started to bring crowds from all over for these people to pray and to heal the sick raise the dead and deliver them from evil spirits. And when I first read about these in the book of Acts, I thought, where are these people today? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they don't exist. I know of a few people who are missionaries, work out in harvest fields, in some very dangerous areas, and I know that they've raised the dead. In fact, one of my friends who I've interviewed on one of the YouTube channels, um, were trying to organize a video because he knows someone down in the south of the country that has a friend who died, was prayed for, raised from the dead, and he comes to give his testimony. And when he gives his testimony, he actually sits and holds his death certificate signed by a doctor, signed by a physician, that he was clinically dead. But he's raised up because a Christian prayed for him. So people like that do exist today. And when I read about this in the book of Acts, I thought, why can't I be one? I mean, why can't you be one? Why don't I walk round and see these things happen? Why don't I see that in my life? And don't get me wrong, I don't want to see it so that I look good. I want to see it that people see Jesus. I want to see it that the love and the compassion that I feel for people sees them healed, delivered and saved. My heart breaks for people. I don't want to look good. I'm not a special person. There's nothing special about me at all. But I'm in pursuit of a lifestyle like that because I want people to see Jesus alive and see Jesus doing all these things today. And I don't see those things happening all the time in my life. The nearest that I've got to that is when somebody walked up to me and as they walked towards me, they started foaming at the mouth and started manifesting a demon before I'd even said anything, before I'd even engaged with them. As they just walked up towards me, that happened. So I pursue a life of fasting, prayer, humbleness and humility 
to see the things that are in the book of Acts come to pass in my life. So the question I have is, who are the people that I've seen in these pictures that are walking the earth full of the power of the Holy Spirit and being great testimony to Jesus? Who are they? Now, it's either me getting confused with my zeal and my passion for that lifestyle to see those things, or it's a real group of people that will be manifesting that power of God. And I did often wonder, was I confusing what I was pursuing with what I was seeing? And then one day recently, I was out on the streets. We were sharing the gospel like we do, me and a group of my brothers and sisters. And one of those brothers is an ex-missionary. He's been a missionary in Africa. He's been a missionary in the Far East. And we were talking about this subject of powerful Christians. And he just commented and said, oh, you ought to read this book. Now, I'm not a massive reader of books outside of the Bible, but as this was one of my trusted brothers, I thought I'll get a copy and have a read. And it's a book called Visions Beyond the Veil. And it's about a group of missionaries who were out in China between 1910 and the 1960s. And they were running a school and they were taking orphans from the streets. There were street gangs of orphans who were begging who were stealing. And this group of missionaries were taking them into a school. They were giving them an education. They were preaching the gospel. They were leading them to Jesus. And they were seeing lives turn around. And one of those missionaries wrote this book. Now, during this time, what's written in this book, something amazing happened. Over a period of weeks, the Holy Spirit fell powerfully onto these boys so powerfully that they were completely convicted of sin, they were weeping, they were having visions, open-eyed visions, they were speaking out the visions that were happening. And then as this revival of the Holy Spirit started to lift, the missionaries took each of the boys separately and started to interview them to see what they had seen in their visions, to see what God had been telling them, what the Holy Spirit had been showing them. And they did it individually so that the boys couldn't come together and corroborate and bring stories that they'd all thought up, but they wanted to do it individually so they could cross-reference and find the truth of what these boys had actually seen. And I want to read something that these boys saw. The children saw the saints filled with the still greater supernatural power of their God, the spirit of him who is greater than he that is in the world. They were exercising the power the Lord had promised his disciples power to do the works he did and greater. When persecution was bitter, they were sometimes caught away bodily by the Holy Spirit as was Philip and as the prophets supposed Elijah had been. They were thus by the Spirit carried away to a place of safety. In time of hunger and need of food was miraculously provided manna, fruit and other food. The children saw in these visions the gospel would be preached again under angelic ministration in the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit in a supernatural way, far exceeding that of the early church in the days of its persecution. Wow, what reading of works that the Holy Spirit had done. And this was confirmation of things that I'd seen, such power which was greater than that that was in the early apostles, that was coming on the earth again. And this is what I had seen. These are the things that I had been having pictures of. So this raises a question, who are they? And the honest answer is, I'm not sure. I have no confirmation of who they are. But there could be a couple of possibilities that I'm aware of, and I just want to share those. And just bear in mind that you take all of this and you test it with the scripture, you test it with the Lord. The first one is that over a period of time, the Lord has been showing me that there's a remnant in the church, a remnant in the current churches today that are rising up, they're rising up, they're wanting biblical truth in the world today. They're not wanting falsehood, they're wanting holiness, they're wanting righteousness, they're wanting the power of the Holy Spirit, they're wanting a testimony that is true, that people will look at and see Jesus alive today. They're wanting to see miracles, signs and wonders. They're hungry for the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. They have a zeal to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth and they look to heal the sick, 
raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and they're looking to love on people. They're full of love and compassion of the Lord. And this is a remnant that is rising in the church. They want to see the book of Acts today. And why shouldn't they? There's nothing changed since Pentecost. Let's read from Acts 2. And it is when Peter's addressing the crowd, when they're accusing the disciples that have all had the Holy Spirit poured on them of being drunk. And this is what one of the things that he says. For these people are not drunk as you assume, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. Those last days started at Pentecost. And there's been nothing that's changed since Pentecost. We are still in the last days looking at eschatology of the Bible. This is still the last days. The pouring out of the Holy Spirit that Joel prophesied is still for today. And this remnant are looking to live the full potential and receive that full outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So is it that remnant or is it another group of people? And the only other group of people that I can think of are in the Bible. So if I read from Revelation 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind would blow on the earth or onto the sea or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascend from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living God. And he called out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on foreheads. And that was the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Judah. They had the seals of God on the forehead and it says that they know Jesus. They know the Lamb. And then in Revelation 14 later they appear on Mount Zion with the Lamb. So we know they're in the earth. We know that the 144,000 and we know that they have the seal of God and that they survive the persecution. So is it them? I don't know. I'm not sure who the people I've seen are. I'm not sure who the people the boys have seen in those visions are. But here's a question. So knowing that we're still under the same grace of God, that we're still under the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of the last days, as I've just read about in the book of Acts, then why can't it be you? Why can't it be me? Why can't it be your church, your family? Why can't we go in pursuit of this lifestyle? Personally, I see God do powerful things. I see him do miracles. I see him encounter people. I see people get saved. I've seen people delivered from demons. I'm no one special. But what I will do is I will pray and fast and seek the Lord to be a testimony and a witness and to move in the power of the Holy Spirit so that Jesus would be glorified. And I encourage you today to take this to the Lord. Go and ask him what is it he wants you to do. Go and ask him to show you how to move in this power. Go and ask him what his will is for your life. Go and ask him what your assignment is. Pray and fast. Seek the Lord, read the scriptures, and why can't you be one of those people? I just bless you guys, I love you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless.